and here we are in front of these magnificent archways at the entrance of Universal Studios Florida. The one thing I will say about entering any Florida park is that you can never ever go into the park in a bad mood. I've got to give Universal Resort a big up here because at the park entrance there's hardly ever any queue. It's like they open up another entrance if they do see a queue. Fantastic. So here we are. First thing you come across is Minion Land. You'll find two attractions in this area of the park. You've got Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, and directly opposite, if you look to the right, we've got the newest addition to Minion Land, which is Minion Blast. Which I can only describe as a frenzy of shoot 'em up action, which has you stand in on a moving walkway with a big gun shoot in loads of characters from the Minions cartoon franchise. It's fantastic. Me and Mrs. H just had a right laugh on that Minion Blast. She's so competitive. She kept pushing me off my little pedestal. You know, look down on the floor, it's got like uh, two feet signs where to put your, where to stand and put your feet like. And uh, I turned around to go and shoot a few things and Mrs. H is pushing me off my pedestal all the time. Still, I had the final laugh when she saw my score at the end. <laughs> Next time, Mrs. H. Such a poor loser. But never mind, she might get her revenge. First look at R Ride Rocket. We'll have a go at that later, no doubt. Just wanted to say you as well, like uh, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. Such a fun experience, you know, it's brilliant. You go into the auditorium, get involved in this like uh, cartoon adventure that you find yourself in. Everything's a little bit chaotic, but yeah, great fun for children and now, uh, of course, big children like me and Mrs. H. Right, so we've left Minion Land now and we're walking through New York, and unfortunately, Race through New York and starring Jimmy Fallon was down, so me and Mrs. H have been able to have a go at that this time. A bit of salsa music in the background, dancers up in there, look. Yeah, very good show going on at the moment. I believe they get people from the audience up to dance there. <laughs> Don't catch me doing it though. But where we are now, we're going to experience my favourite ride in Universal Studios, the Dark Coaster, which is Revenge of the Mummy. Mrs. H put an application in for me to be one of these uh, guys on stilts by her, but they rejected it, saying that my uh, my muscles were too big. Of course, this ride has had its problems in the past, but I believe now it's all on point, so we should be in for a great ride. It's got loads of special effects, it's got forwards and backwards thrills, so me and Mrs. H are going to give it a go. So we find ourselves back by King's Cross Station again. Um, we had to bypass the area by uh, Fast and Furious. There were a few work walls up there. I don't know what was going on really, but um, looked like they were setting up some sort of display. Not sure whether it was temporary or not, but um, we'll have a little look later on. Well, look at that telephone box. Don't see many of them in the UK these days. But missing out on Fast and Furious, not the end of the world. It's one of those attractions where, unfortunately for me, the queue line is more exciting than the attraction itself. Well done, Ali. Let's check this out. I love how they've angled these walls so you can't see what's in front of you as you come around the corner. But when you do, it all opens up and it's magnificent. Look at it. The level of detail that there is around here is just out of this world, you know. The creativity shown here beggars belief. You know, you've got the train station next door, and there's a bridge that comes across here in front of Diagon Alley, and um, it makes sound effects of trains going past. It's like they thought of everything. And here we are, at the Leaky Cauldron, you can have a breakfast. Don't think we'll be getting up early enough for that, though. Me and Mrs. H like to have a bit of a lie-in in the moment. Mrs. H loves Harry Potter, she queued for hours outside the bookshops to get the books so she could read them in the first day. There she is, look, taking it all in. 
quite quiet in this area today, to be fair, so uh, hopefully we won't have any problems uh, getting on green dots. But uh, yeah, let's have a look in the windows here. Yeah. Gilder and Lockhart, he was a bit of a, a phony and a wimp in the films, wasn't he? But I just love the way that they've done all this interaction in the windows. I don't normally get a chance to look in the windows because usually there's queues of kids standing around uh, waving their wands trying to get uh, things to move like I've mentioned before. All the wands are interactive and as we walk around you probably see some uh, people standing there waving their wands trying to get uh, the action done. The level of detail around here is fantastic, mate, it's got to be said. And, uh, oh look at that, <laughs> over here look. Ollivanders has got another shop in Diagon Alley. Go with this Hogsmeade shop. Must have a little franchise going on. I am quite surprised though how much room I've actually got to walk around here today because normally this street is packed where people are just focusing their attention on the dragon above Gringotts Bank because um, that dragon will, uh, will blow fire at uh, certain points in time during the day and uh, generally it's just a big standstill in front of Gringotts looking up at this dragon so yeah, all good, we can move around the park quite freely here yeah, which is, a, which is a, a change although strangely it's a lot noisier around here when there's less people I think it's like the acoustics are bouncing things off of each other My left here is the Fountain of Fair Fortune, a um, beer production. Oof. Murder of beer right now, but I don't think this is it for a loudy drive in this evening, see? The point in wands are everything, yeah. I've never done it, to be honest. I've never purchased a wand. I'd be interested to know, really, how many, uh, how many attractions around Hogsmeade and uh, Diagon Alley there is for you to interact with you on. just entered a little area by Morgan and Burks and I didn't even realise there was like a little tunnel leading through, pitch black in there, couldn't do any filming like, but walk through the tunnel, past the shop and it's brought us back up by Weasley's uh, uh, joke shop. So yeah, huh. discovered something new in the park today, never really uh, entertained the idea of walking down there, but uh, amazing how you can find some little nooks and crannies that you've never seen before and then end up uh, basically discovering something new. Well, well, well. I've lost Mrs H again though. She's in here somewhere but who knows? Probably bump into her now while uh, I go looking for the dragon breathing fire. Let's get a quick look by her now as a member of staff by her and we've new one get in Gringotts um, so we'll get on this ride and uh, tell you all about it so we've just had our uh, ride on Escape from Gringotts and I'll tell you a little bit about it in a, in a little while but I'm stood here now waiting for this dragon to breathe fire so here we go impressive queue for the night bus. Let's go and get some uh, action with the conductor. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Are you from the UK? Yeah. Where are you from? Wales. Oh, they're from Wales. Wait, you say you live in a whale? I don't live in what, a whale. You mean like a wishing whale or like, like a killer whale? No, like Wales, the, the country, mate. Oh, 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 the country. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I'm familiar, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your favorite, I think your favourite Quidditch team plays in Wales. Yeah, the Harley Head Harpies. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, they got a nice uniform. Yeah. I wish we could go to a match, but we've got to wait on our bus driver at the moment. He went to run an errand at Diagon Alley, so we're a bit stranded ourselves currently. Man, that driver, he's been gone too long, man. He's taking forever. He's taking a long while in there, yeah. If you happen to see him, if you go back in there, let him know to get back to work. We're still waiting on him. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell him, to, tell him to say that he on over. Yeah, <laughs> That'd be great. That they only seem to bring out at uh, Halloween Horror Nights, and of course, Men in Black. Let's go and beat Mrs. H in the shoot them up again. We've just had a mad experience on Men in Black Alien Attack. 
our our car broke down and uh, we were just stranded there for like 15 minutes. But what Mrs. H didn't realise was that our guns were still working and I just kept shooting the same thing all the time. Now of course, being the competitor that she is, Mrs. H didn't want to accept that as a fair game, even though I had like three times her score by the time our, uh, our car started moving again. But like I said about this area just now, I am... I'm not, I'm not a fan if I'm being totally honest, I think this area of the park needs a regeneration and there has been talk that something could be on the way, potentially a Back to the Future roller coaster. but for now the Simpson ride's still here, which isn't as good as the Back to the Future ride that preceded it. I'll just nip in a quickie mark now and get myself a six pack of duff. <laughs> anyway. Um, what I will say about this area is that Universal have really, really captured uh, the town of Springfield exceptionally well. Um, whether or not this area is going to remain, um, it, who knows? It's just that now that Disney have obtained the rights to the Simpsons franchise, would Universal want to be competing against Disney in one of the thing with one of the things that they've actually? brought on board themselves and no doubt will incorporate at some point within the Disney parks. It's a difficult one for Universal because, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of investment has been made in this area and to just rip it all down would be a shame. But I feel that this is where we're going and if there are rumours of things like Back to the Future returning to the park, I, for one, would love to see Hill Valley in this area of the park. That would be fantastic. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> Quote from Back to the Future, best trilogy movie of all time. Grey Sports Almanac there, the Flux Capacitor. Awesome. I just love Back to the Future. I just think that uh, no matter whether you're 5, 10, 20, 50, 60, whatever, there's enough in those in those films to make everybody happy. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, if Back to the Future does come back to the park, then I'm all for it. Man, it is luck. Nice little plaque in front of the DeLorean, quoting the exact thing that I just spoke of. Love it. Emmett Brown's train there from uh, Back to the Future 3. The way I look at it, in terms of bringing Back to the Future back to Universal Studios, um, there's just, well, technology's moved on so much since the, it was last year. And there's just so much that they could do that would relate to all three movies. I wouldn't even be surprised to see a, a new franchise of the film coming out, if I'm being totally honest. So we do have a new land uh, opening in this area of the park, down by E.T. Adventure. DreamWorks World, not quite open yet. As I turn around, we see Transformers The Ride, Mrs. H's favourite 3D ride attraction at Universal Resort, where Optimus Prime is fighting off the Decepticons to save the old spot. Let's get her on it. Just had a little ride there on uh, Transformers, and uh, fair to say Mrs. H still enjoys that uh, ride quite a lot. Um, she obviously likes it still over Spider-Man me. I just think there's too much going on. Um, you know, you're trying to feast your eyes on the screen, but it's 